What's up guys, it's me, AG, and welcome to our second Venice vlog. Today is gonna be another packed day full of food and sights. We're gonna hit up Osteria Al Square to munch on some chiquetti, take a bucket list item and grab a golden hour gondola ride, dine on some great Venetian food in Osteria Mocenigo, and finally bask in a shower of Venetian history at Palazzo Ducale. Let's go. So starting our second day off here at the Rialto Bridge, arguably the most famous bridge crossing the Grand Canal. There's only like three, I think it's four, there might be a fourth new one, I'll, I'll double check. Four bridge crossing the Grand Canal. I mean, the view is, it's, it's out of a painting. I, I can't, that's, that's all I can describe it with. It's a painting, look at it. We stumbled upon the Rialto market. Um, we arrived a bit late, so it's not as busy as it should be, but they've got a nice fish market here. The fish look beautiful. The fresh produce looks beautiful. Uh, it's definitely a really nice spot to check out when you're here in Venice. So a popular snack here in Venice is chiquetti. They're little bite-sized pieces, you know, bread filling. We hit up Osteria Al Suero here next to like, this is where, this is the workshop where the gondolas get repaired. Got myself a spritz as well. Cannot wait to dig in. Firstly, when in Venice, you know, you gotta get a spritz. It's an orange flavored alcoholic drink. Pretty typical in this area. Ah, refreshing. So we got a variety of chiquetti. It's mostly seafood themed, um, but we got some cod, some lard, some octopus, some anchovies, some uh, raw beef, anchovies again, cheese with artichokes on top, and a uh, fritti, which is filled with cod. They all look delicious, oh my goodness. Firstly, the cod, pretty typical in this area. Oh yeah, creamy, fishy cod, that's so nice. Carrying on with the cream theme, cheese and artichokes on top. Mmm, oh yeah. With artichoke, give it a really nice flavor that counterbalances like the light creaminess of that cream cheese. Mm. Oh, it's actually ricotta cheese, so it's got a bit of that pungent cheesiness going on. Like it's slight, but it's there. Very nice. Next up, some lard. It's literally like strands of fat in between meat. Oh yeah. That's just, that's just pure fat. That's so glorious and nice. It, Disintegrated right into my mouth. Octopus time, it's not really a thing in New Zealand, so whenever I go overseas, I gotta get it when it's there. Oh yeah. Clean, good bite to it. You know, it's plain, but it's nice. Next up, some anchovies. I don't know why anchovies get such a bad rep. Like, even in Spain, all the anchovies we've had was so nice, so let's taste it. Oh yeah. Mm. It's got that strong, salty, seafoody flavor. It's what you want in an anchovy. It's not too intense, which is nice. It's got a vinegary thing going on as well. Mm. Very good. Next up, um, I'm not actually sure what the, the cream thing is with like the red strands, but there's anchovies on top, so let's taste it. Mm. It's very oniony. I think it might be like red onions in a cream. I think anchovies give it that saltiness again. Oh, if you're not really into like pungent flavors, maybe this, this is not for you, but I like it. Next up, literally raw beef with some cheese on top. And I think it's some arugula. Mm. Okay, had a bit of trouble separating it. But, oh yeah, I like raw beef. It's got that beautiful texture. It's fatty, it's beefy. The cheese and the um, arugula give it a really nice flavor. Also not gonna lie, the beef had the slightest prosciutto porky quality to it. Very nice. Finally, at Yami's request, fritti with cod. You know Yami loves cod, so we had to get it. Hmm. I know it's a little cod, but it's almost potato in quality. Wow. It's not as fishy, but you know, it's a very comforting fritti. Can't complain. 
Okay, I'm officially a Chiquetti fan, especially Osteria al Square with the beautiful view of the gondola workshop and a nice church behind us. Definitely hit this up or just any Chiquetti bar because it's so good value for money. Uh, very similar to a Pinchos bar in Barcelona. So much variety, so much to choose from. All packed full of flavor. Very nice. On to the next place. Up, we couldn't resist passing up a pretty quintessential Venice experience, a gondola ride. Let's go. Gondolas are everywhere in Venice, and we were able to arrange a ride for ourselves through our hotel. A typical half-hour ride costs around 80 euros, and despite what other people say, it is definitely an essential Venice experience. In my opinion, it's definitely one of those moments where you just sit back, take a deep breath, and just appreciate the moment that is unraveling before you. It's dinner time and we went to this place called Osteria Mocenigo, aptly named because the Mocenigo Palace apparently is just outside its doors. I'm not really sure about my Venetian history, but I'm sure it's interesting. Um, but this place looks really nice. It's like very, has a really homey, rustic feel. I keep on saying that about every place that we go to, but it's just facts. We got three pastas and some seafood. I know I don't eat enough seafood, but I'm loving how much seafood I've been having lately. Hopefully the food is good, so let's eat. So first dish I'm gonna try is their spaghetti with prawns and zucchini. Never in my life would have I thought I would have ordered spaghetti with green vegetables, but here we are. You know I had to drizzle an extra some extra extra version all of them. Mm. Mm. It's actually really nice. I think like the oil is just like lightly flavored and the vegetables is what really carries it. The acidity of the tomato brings that brings that brightness. And then the prawns, you know, it does its thing. Very nice. Next up is our house lasagna. You know I'm a sucker for lasagna, so you know we had to get it. Oh yeah. Mm. Super heartwarming, cheesy, meaty, oily goodness. Oh yeah. It's what you want in lasagna. So next up is the ravioli. I think it's filled with like ground fish and it comes with a lot of vegetables. Some like eggplant, zucchini, bell peppers. Let's taste. Mm. That's really nice. All those vegetables are really sweet. The fish is like, nice and creamy. And the ravioli, the, the pasta itself has a good al dente texture. I can't get enough of those vegetables. They're really sweet, really simple. And like, it's bathed in oils, which is, you know, like, I guess it kind of negates the healthiness of the vegetables. But I, I'm sure it's healthy because it's like extra fresh in olive oil, so I hope so. It's healthy. So lastly, is there cuttlefish in its own ink? I mean, yet again, menacing looking. Let's taste. Wow. I don't know how to describe the sauce, but it's really flavorful. But the, the texture of the cuttlefish is something else. It's unlike any, like, cephalopod texture I've ever tried before. It's, not, it's, not, it's soft, but it has a bite. The texture is really unique here. Actually, let me try it with the cuttlefish. So polenta and cuttlefish. Oh yeah. Mm. The polenta like soaks in all the sauces and oils and just disperses it throughout your mouth. 
Yeah, that's a good combo. So last just we got was just their mixed grill because you know if you're gonna go to Venice, you gotta have their seafood. So it comes with um, this little fish. I think it might be an anchovy or a sardine. I'm not sure. Scallops and prawns and of course these the beloved polenta cakes. Gotta drizzle some more olive oil on that polenta cake. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Coat is. those bad boys with that delicious olive oil. Mm. Prawn. Mm. Very juicy and plump. It's prawns and they're good. Fish. Soft, slightly salty, melts in your mouth. Beautiful. Finally, scallops. Mm. I love scallops. And, you know, this is the reason why I love scallops. So fresh, so plump, very nice. So that was a pretty nice, comforting Venetian meal. Every meal was very nice, very heartwarming, in a beautiful setting. Oh man, that was a very nice home-style meal. On to the next place. the dinner like our dad wanted to get some gelato so we got four different variations of gelato like I can't remember all of them but I know most of them has like a hazelnut one like chocolate and just like hazelnut and the one that I chose was the fior de latte which is basically just like fresh milk I know that's like the most basic flavor but I really like vanilla um, when done well mm. very creamy smooth quite milky. I know that sounds really dumb, but obviously it has that fresh milk taste as it should and it's not too sweet, which is really nice. Yeah, so we got like different variations of hazelnut. This chocolatey one, super deep, has that typical dark chocolate flavor, nutty, very good. Yeah, one of the flavors is more hazelnutty in flavor. And this one I can't pinpoint, but <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me something? I forgot. <laughs> this is all pretty good. Not too heavy on the stomach, especially after a nice dinner. Very nice. So those were some pretty good flavors. Uh, pretty good way to, to end the day, the night. You know, not too heavy. And even though it's a cold night, cold ice cream. Oops, sorry, gelato. Pretty good. You know, Venice at night just has a completely different energy to it. Like during the day, you have the hordes of tourists it almost feels like a movie set, like fantasy theme park in a way. Like if you get lost, you have like the hordes of tourists going the same way as you to guide you. But during the night, you're on your own. There's barely any people. There's barely any lights, only the lights to guide the boats. And again, from the movie set theme park during the day, it just transformed to what should be, what could be the most perfect Dark Souls location. ringing. We're here at the Piazza San Marco at night. Big Dark Souls energy, baby. Tomorrow. So last day here in Venice. Last few stops in our Venice trip. Firstly, Palazzo Ducale. Let's go. So here we are in the Doge's palace. It is absolutely beautiful. It is an ancient structure with many buildings being built in different times. Some in the Renaissance, some in the 14th century, and some have been rebuilt over time. It is an absolute masterpiece of Gothic architecture. Behind me is the giant staircase, which is the official staircase when officials would come visit the palace. It's absolutely beautiful, and I cannot wait to explore the rest of this palace. Now, you can't really leave Venice without a visit to Palazzo Ducale to appreciate the palaces and the city's history. We paid for the standard ticket, which is also quite handy as it gives you access to all the museums around Piazza San Marco. The palace leads you through some great pieces of art and sculpture, a medieval weapons and armor museum, which I personally enjoyed exponentially more than any of my family, probably all the years playing medieval total war to be honest, but I digress. And finally, room after gorgeous room, until you reach the centerpiece of the palace, the lavishly imposing Chamber of the Great Council. 
So here we are at the Chamber of the Great Council. It's one of the largest rooms in Europe. I don't know, I'm almost disgusted by how beautiful this room is. Like, behind me is El Paradiso, one of the largest canvas paintings in the world. Even the waiting rooms in the Doge's Palace were beautiful. And then we end the, we end the tour in this room, the biggest one, the most ornate, the most beautiful. I mean, look at the room around you, how ornate it is, how many like commissioned paintings there are. I think this palace is just a massive testament to just how powerful and rich and grand Venice was at its heyday when it was the most powerful. Oh my. I didn't get to film it, but someone just dabbed in this room. I feel that this room was just desecrated. <laughs> so that was the Doge's Palace for you. Amazing, breathtaking. If this place doesn't convince you how powerful how magnificent, how rich Venice was in its heyday, then I don't know what will. It is truly a monument to Venice's successes and riches. Let's go. Okay, finally to cap off our Venice food experience, we just got some tramezzini or tramezzino in singular. This is a free biscotti? Yes. Biscotto. Pardon me? It's a biscotto. Biscotti. That would be if there was more than one. There's only one. Um, there are these triangular sandwiches filled with a variety of stuff. You'll find them all around Venice, so just hit up any bar. I think a lot of them are two euros and below a slice, which is pretty reasonable. So tramezzini, they originated in the Piedmont region of Italy, but now it's just a thing all over the country. Uh, we got some prawns and some crab. It's like the surimi crab, but crab. It's like a surimi crab that you find in like Japanese restaurants, but you know, um, let's have a taste. All right, so prawn and egg. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, it's simple. It's creamy. It's mayonnaise. It's got egg. It's like a very comforting sandwich. You can't really complain at the price point. If you're on the go and just looking for a quick snack, Chamizino is where it's at. I'm gonna try the one with the fake crab, like the surimi. I actually had the prawn one a while ago, but I just wanted to give this a taste. Just like the prawn is creamy. The egg shines. So does the fake crab. A nice pillowy white bread. Prove me wrong, but sandwiches cut diagonally are better than sandwiches cut straight. Facts. <laughs> That'll do for the Venice vlog. I think it was everything that I dreamt it would be, especially the food that we ate was so nice. If you're gonna go to Venice, definitely get their seafood. It is right next to the sea after all. Their pastas are amazing. The cecchetti, the tramezzini, all of it. So much variety and so much flavor. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So guys, I'll stop rambling and that'll do for the Venice vlog. We're here in Florence now, gonna explore the city tomorrow. I'm sure that'll be fun. I'm gonna eat some delicious food. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one.